everyone, it's Julia. Today I brought out my jelly plate and I thought I would do some uh, printing on fabric. My jelly plate is a, the largest one that I could find at the time and it's a 12 inch by 14 inch. I'm going to link all my supplies that I'm using down below. All the paint that I'm using today is acrylic paints but a variety of different kinds and I'm just playing with all my supplies using stencils and just different things. The fabric that I'm using is the multi-purpose cloth made by Rockland. And a little bit about this fabric. It is uh, originally sold as drapery blackout fabric. Back in the day when I used to manage a fabric store, we carried it. And like I said, it's made by Rockland. It is a drapery fabric, so it's 54 inches wide, a little bit wider than, than some fabrics. The content on it is 70% polyester and 30% cotton. The, it has taken the art, store, art department by storm because of the way it will take paint and you can sew on it, you can stamp on it, and it is just a really fun fabric to work with. I do have some samples of it in my Etsy shop and I will also link that down below. I'm selling just taking some off of the roll that I have so if, if any of you want to try it I'm selling it like in a packs of, of three and I think I'm it is 12 by 14 pieces. I'm laying some tags on right now just to get rid of or just to pick up some of that excess paint. These will be for future projects but as you can see I am just playing and just using all sorts of different colors. I am putting on a little bit of a, a fabric or excuse me a paint extender and also a fabric medium on in, in with my paint. I'm not going to be heat setting this but I find that adding that fabric medium and that extender extends the open time on this paint especially some of this paint which is a little bit more of a heavy body. It just it's nice to be able to um, Thin it out a little bit and make it last a little bit longer, keep the open time. Here I am actually writing backwards. One of the things I have found out at a very young age is that I, being left handed, I can write backwards very easily. Now this was a talent that made my, my brother mad because he's right handed and couldn't do it, but really wasn't a talent that I used until I found or discovered the jelly plate. And it really is, it's just been a lot of fun to be able to write backwards and then have it print up the right way. These are some text, some texture plates that I have had in my stash for a long time. I'm not even certain what they were originally intended for, but they work great on the jelly plate. But I'm also using different uh, bubble wraps and just all you can use all sorts of different textures. I even find a, found a pair of flip-flops with a neat design on at the dollar store and was able to use that in different textures on the jelly jelly plate. So you can just have fun and experiment with it. Now so many of the stencils that I purchase I get at Tuesday morning. They sell at overstocks or maybe some that are soon to be discontinued and I pick them up for $1.99 some of them 90, 99 cents a lot of fun um, and this is actually a mask that I'm using so this is the, the inside part of the stencil and later on I'm, I'm using the actual stencil of these little ladies Some of the stencils that I'm using are current. I'm using, I use a Jane Davenport stencil in here and a Donna Downey, and, and I'll link those down below also. But so many of them I pick up at the at Tuesday morning, and I, you can no longer get them. But but check that out if you have a Tuesday morning close to you. And here's that that lady stencil. I'm a little bit off off screen here, but you can see what I'm doing by putting that paint in that stencil. Now I am creating 12 of these pieces of, of, of 12 by 14 inch fabrics and I'm making pencil pouches today. These are a larger pouch. They're great for, for holding markers or washi tape or any of your art supplies. Now the MCP fabric is 
washable, but I think some of the structure would come out if you washed it. Personally, I have never washed washed it, but they are something that you can um, wash a little bit or spot wash. I'm cutting down to size now. I cut that inch strip off. That's going to be for the zipper tabs. And then I am cutting them into a six and a half by 12 piece. Now I'm adding just more stamping and different doodling. And this actually didn't turn out. This was an uh, uh, oops. But what's so great about fabric is you can just cover it up or rip it out. So I'm imprinting that again, that um, rubber stamp on just white fabric. And I'm just going to stitch that on to cover that. These are my Arteza um, brush markers. They actually sent these to me, and I am having so much fun with these on fabric. I'm sure they weren't meant to be used for fabric, but, you know, you, why not? Um, this is not something I'm going to wash, although I did do a project with these, and I heat set it. I'm going to insert a picture here, but I, I heat set it, and... I washed it in, in with just a load of towels, and I got the most, I just got a really fun look. Um, so these, you can't, you just experiment with your supplies. Always test, but you, it's, it's remarkable what you can, what you can come up with. I'm also just using a colored pencil here, just to fill in and just to do some blending. But what I love about those brush markers, and I've been wanting to try them for a long time, is that you could, they are a nylon bristle, and they go to a fine point. Here's the piece that I mentioned that I used these brush markers on and washed it. It gave it a, a watercolor look that's so soft and pretty, and the colors blended so nice. These are my pick pen by Faber-Castell. They have a variety of different um, ends on them. This is like the medium end, and they have a bold point too, and they're great for adding in some more detail. I'm just outlining some of the, the stamp that um, didn't impress very well. And these are my paint markers. And again, everything will be listed down below. These, have, these are acrylic paint, and they're great for if you'd like to doodle, and you can also doodle on your, on your fabric using these Arteza um, brush markers again for a stencil. They work awesome for stencils because you can really get it to a fine point and get the detail in the, in the stencils. And just using gesso to, to stamp on this or to stencil on this. And this is like a words that you're not going to really be able to read, but you can tell that they're words. And I love the way it turned out to my sewing machine now and I'm just doing some free motion outlining and some doodling. I'm using black thread. All of these pouches will be sewn with black zippers or that black zippers will be inserted. So I'm doing a lot of my details in black. I have my feed dogs down now and I'm doing all the movement on this. Just doing some doodling over here, kind of take bringing those circles that you see in the background and sewing this patch on and just doing a little zig just to give it some interest. And now doing an, another outline of a stencil and writing the word hello in the word bubble. Back to my table and adding some more rubber stamps. This is a fun rubber stamp that I found. It's just these three circles. And then using my brush markers once again to add the color. And my paint markers. The paint markers are very opaque, so if you want a white, it's easy to use a, to get that white, especially if you use more than one layer. Using my colored pencils too, 
just in a combination of a, just a bunch of stuff. Onto the zipper, putting these zipper tabs on and cutting just a little bit of that excess tape. This is the, the end where the zipper pull is, and we'll be enclosing that and just stitching across. Now these zippers need to be cut one inch shorter, so I'm cutting that zipper at 11 inches and then enclosing that end part also the same way, just sewing across. Wonderful working with this MPC because it doesn't fray. I don't have to turn in the edges. Putting the zipper face down onto it so that's, that the wrong side of the zipper is, is face down onto the front of my pouch and do, using the clips. This fabric doesn't like to be pinned, so I do use clips, and we'll be sewing right in the middle of the zipper tape. Finger pressing and top stitching, and now putting the other side of the pouch on. So the zipper is face down on the front side. I had forgotten to add the paint to the wrong side of this MPC, which is something I, I usually like to do so it's not completely white on the inside. And stitching up all the way around, making sure, and, and then I also unbox, unboxing the, the corners here, but make sure that that zipper is open before you sew the side seams in the bottom. Ask me how many times I have forgotten to do that. But you need that zipper open in order to turn this bag. This is a little bit of a workout because this fabric is stiff but I just keep working at it and just keep poking those corners out and poking that zipper tab out. And it just it adds to such a professional zipper closure. And here are some pictures, front and back, of all 12 of these little pouches that I finished. I hope you enjoy this. Just take a look at all the different things and how different each one turned out. This is just a great play on fabric and using up some of those products that you may have on hand that you just don't use very often. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a chance to create and just um, do something different. Until next time. Bye for now.